Hey everyone, um, this is Medical Terminology, the basics, lesson three. So this is actually a continuation of lesson one and two. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk more about um, some medical terminology with regards to medical conditions and medical processes. And at the end of the lesson, we're going to go through some practice problems to get a better grasp and solidify some of the information we've learned in these last few lessons. So to begin, um, we're gonna look at some condition modifiers first. So the first one I wanna talk to you guys about is anti, which means opposed to, counteracting, and relieving. So this is a very important one. You can think of antibodies or anti-inflammatory, something that is relieving or counteracting another process. The next one is pro, uh, which means before, preceding, or precursor, but it also has, an, also has another meaning, which um, could mean inducing or promoting. So you can think of um, for be before proceeding as progenitor cells, and um, for inducing or promoting, you can think of pro-inflammatory, something that's actually causing or inducing inflammation. So the next category I want to look at is locations. Um, centra, which means center. So you can think of centrifuge um, or centripetal. These just mean um, center. So the next category is cellular modifier. So we didn't get much into this in the last couple lessons, but... Uh, we can think of fibro, um, which simply means fiber. So you can think of fibroblast in this case. Um, the next one is thrombo, which simply means clot. So you can think of thrombocyte or um, thrombosis or thrombocytopenia. They all just simply mean something to, to do with clot. The next one is blasto, um, which simply means um, stem cell. You can think of blastocele or blastocyst, simply um, a prefix meaning germ cell. The next one is the suffix of blast, which is very similar to blasto. It just means progenitor cell, stem cell, or formative cell. So we can think of, again, as I mentioned before, fibroblast. It's a progenitor cell. And the next one is uh, clast. Now, you might not hear about this too much, but you can think of osteoclast. So a clast is just an absorbing or degradative cell. So as I mentioned before, osteoclast, it's a cell that actually absorbs bone. So the next set I want to talk to you guys about is condition modifiers. So um, these can include something known as uh, phagia or phagio or phago, which simply means to eat, to consume, or ingest. So you can think of dysphagia, uh, a problem with eating or consuming. The next one is dipsia. Um, so this just simply means to drink. Now you can think of uh, polydipsia. You're drinking too much or above normal amount of drinking of fluids. The next one is pepsia, which simply means digestion. So you can think of um, dyspepsia, um, the problem in uh, digestion. The next one is amesis which simply means vomiting. So you might have heard of hematemesis, um, vomiting of blood. The next one is urea, which means urination. So you can think of polyuria, you're urinating too much. Or you can think of nocturia, which means you um, urinate at night. So the next one is sterco, which denotes feces. So you don't hear this one too often. Um, but you can think of stercobilin or the, the compound that actually gives um, feces their color. The next one is ptosis, um, which just means lowered position of an organ. Uh, you, you see there's a P in this, um, in this term, but we actually don't pronounce it. It's just ptosis. Um, and you can think of ptosis of the eye, so like or of the eyelid. So um, it's... Its full form is bufferotosis, but we just call it ptosis. It's just a drooping of the eyelid. So it's really just any lower position of an organ. You can use this for other um, organ terms as well. The next one is pio, which means pus. So you might have heard of empyema. The next one is pyre, um, which uh, relates to fever or heat. So you can think of pyrexia um, or pyrogenic. Um, a fever is, it's actually pyrexia, and pyrogenic is anything that actually can produce a fever. So the next set are process modifiers. So 
noso, um, which denotes disease. So you can think of nosocomial. Um, we usually talk about nosocomial in the hospital. It's a disease that has started within the hospital, nosocomial infection. So just noso actually just means um, or denotes disease. The next one is chrono, uh, which just denotes time. So this is a pretty easy one. We know we can think of chronic. Um, so that's very easy to remember this one. The next one is noct or nocti, um, which means night or dark. And again, as I mentioned before, you can think of nocturia, you're peeing at night, or nocturnal. Uh, that's just simply um, denotes or represents night or dark. The next one is I iatro, um, which means medicine or doctors. And you can think of iatrogenic. So uh, nosocomial and iatrogenic are very similar in the sense that iatrogenic infections, we can think of, these are actually have been caused by um, some medical process or through um, doctors, really. Um, so you can get iatrogenic um, infections. We, we say that um, certain illnesses that you pick up in a hospital can be iatrogenic. The next one is steno, um, which just means narrowing, so stenosis. Um, you can think of spinal stenosis, there's a narrowing of the spine, or you can get stenosis of particular arteries. So these are all just narrowing of, of a tunnel or narrowing of a, of a lumen. The next one is thermo, which just represents heat or temperature. It's so very easy, thermal energy you can think of, or thermogenic, um, etc. So the next one is psychro, which denotes cold. So you might not hear this one too often, but you might hear psychrometer. The next one is nosa, um, which denotes pain or injury. So you're not going to hear this one too often, but you can think of, or you might hear, nociceptor, um, which is just a pain receptor. So the next one is hernia, or hernia, which just simply means hernia. So the next set of process modifiers, um, we can think of necro, um, which means death. So you can think of necropsy or, or necromancer. These all just uh, are related to death. Um, a suffix that we can think of, um, um, or we might hear, is praxia. So you might um, um, hear like apraxia, um, something to do with motor activity. Taxi is also related to motor activity, so you might hear ataxia. There's no um, motor movement or there's rigidity in some, some fashion. Another uh, suffix for conditions, you might hear lexia, so a condition involving reading. So you might hear alexia, so the person is not able to read due to some um, psychological condition. Other suffixes include um, lalia and logia, which are, are or stand for conditions involving speech. So you might hear echolalia, which means you, when the patient hears something, they repeat it back. Or um, alogia, they are not able to speak. So you'll see some of these um, suffixes used in um, describing conditions, usually involving psychological conditions. Another suffix that is very important is algesia, which denotes pain. We're all very aware of analgesic or analgesia. So um, an representing lack and algesia or algesic representing pain. So lack of pain. It's an analgesic is something that we use to remove pain or to reduce pain. Another one is algia or algia. Um, and this actually, again, denotes pain. So you might... Uh, here, myalgia, muscle pain, my or myo standing for muscle and algia standing for pain. So myalgia is muscle pain or uh, cephalgia, head pain. So um, all of these algia suffixes denote pain. Another suffix that's very important is genic, um, which just means producing. So as I mentioned before, I've, I've used a couple examples. Uh, pyrogenic, um, something that produces a fever thermogenic, something that produces heat. These all, um, these suffixes, or this suffix simply means producing. Another one is genesis. So genesis actually um, can be used or stands for origin or development. So you might hear 
um, embryogenesis or gametogenesis. So the next cat, uh, category I want to talk to you guys about is indicators and markers. So these are very important um, when we look at um, blood screening panels. And um, one is hydro, which simply means water. So we all know that one's very, very common or very simple. So you can think of hydration or dehydrated. Cholesterol, um, which simply means cholesterol. That's a very easy one. So you might have hypercholesterolemia, um, too high of a cholesterol level in the blood. Another one is lipids, um, which just means lipids or fats. So this is, again, very easy. You can think of hyperlipidemia, uh, too high or above normal levels of fat in the blood. Another one is hemoglobin, which stands for hemoglobin. So you can think of hemoglobinuria. You can think of, um, so hemoglobinuria is just when you actually urinate uh, hemoglobin. When you have so much hemoglobin, you actually pee it out. Another one is glyco, um, which stands for glucose or sometimes um, just a general sugar. But um, you can think of hyperglycemia. These are very um, common things you might hear of hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, um, high or low blood sugars. So the next one is fructo, um, which just simply stands for fructose. So you can think of fructosuria, a condition where a patient is peeing out uh, fructose. Another one is galacto, um, which simply stands for galactose. So you might hear of galactorrhea. Another one is steato, um, which simply stands for fat or fatty tissue. So you can think of steatosis or steatorrhea. Another one is natri or nadir, um, which means sodium. So this is a very important one um, that we would commonly look at when we look at um, electrolyte levels. So you can think of hypernatremia, there's a too high of a concentration of sodium in the blood, or hyponatremia. These are very, um, very critical conditions that we must um, understand, and this is a very important one to remember. Likewise, CAL, which stands for potassium, um, is extremely important as well. So you can think of hyperkalemia or hypokalemia. Um, hyperkalemia, you might have a too high of a concentration of potassium in the blood, or hypokalemia, you might have a too low of a concentration of potassium in the blood. These, again, are incredibly important, and they can have devastating health impacts. Another one is calcium, which simply stands for calcium. So you might think of hypercalcemia. Again, all of these are very important when looking at electrolytes in the blood. Another one is chlor, which means chlorine. And another one is coal, which means bile. So you might have heard of cholangitis or um, cholecystectomy. So coal just simply means bile. So some other modifiers um, with regard to more anatomy and physiology. Histo, which means tissue. So histology, you can think of histology in this case. Another one is hydro. Um, which means um, sweating. So this, uh, you might get confused with hydro meaning water. This hydro is actually spelled with an I instead of a Y. So you can think of hydrosis in this case. That's um, excess sweating or hyperhidrosis. Another one that's very important is hema, hemo, or hemato, which means blood. So again, we've talked about um, hematology or hematemesis. So another one is hapto, which is related to touch. So you can think of words like haptic. Um, hallet means breath. So um, when someone has bad breath, that actually um, is a condition we call halitosis. Another one is proprio, um, which means uh, pressure touch. So you can think of proprioception. You'll talk about different types of proprioceptors. Um, any receptor or any process of sensation that has something to do with pressure touch. So other terms that we didn't get involved in too much um, in the other lessons um, are ger, gero, or geronto, which means um, which means old age. So you can think of gerontology. Uh, lith um, actually means stone. So there's a lot of medical conditions that use lith, such as um, kidney stones. Uh, side means killer or killing. You can think of homicide or bactericidal. And scepter, uh, we've talked about this before, but this just represents receptor or sensor.
So some examples, I've, I've talked about this before, polyphagia, poly, we can look at, we just break it down. Um, poly means many or a lot, and phagia just means to eat or consume. So really, all this term means is excessive eating or a lot of eating. Another term, or another example, is dyspepsia. So dys, you can think of, dys means problem or abnormal. Pepsia means uh, digestion. So this term just simply means indigestion or disordered digestion. There's some problem with digestion. Another one is cholemesis or cholemesis. Um, so we can break this down again, guys. Um, chol, what does that mean? Well, again, that means bile. Emesis means vomiting. So what does this mean? Well, it means vomiting of bile. Some other um, examples include hypercalciuria. Um, so Again, we just break it down. Hyper means above normal or high. Calci means um, something to do with calcium. And urea means urination. So what does this mean? When you put it all together, it means above normal level of calcium in the urine. Another one is nephrolithiasis. So this might be a little more tricky, so we'll just break it down again. So this first part, what does this mean? What does neph nephro mean? Well, nephro actually means kidney. Now, lith, I mentioned just, just uh, not too long ago, lith means stone. And iasis actually is a condition, some um, uh, abnormal condition. So what does this actually mean? Well, this actually means kidney stones. So nephro, uh, nephrolithiasis actually just means kidney stones. And the last one um, is arthralgia. So again, what does this mean? Well, let's just break it down again. So arth means joint. In algae means pain. So this simply just means joint pain. Um, so you might think, okay, what about arthritis? Well, arthritis actually just means inflammation of joint. It's not actually the same, but they're usually, if you have arthritis, you have arthralgia. But um, that's it's just a different way of, of saying um, something that's very similar, but they're actually not the same. Anyways, guys, that was um, Medical Terminology, the Basics Lesson 3. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.